morning class. I'm your instructor, Don Caparelli. I'm the safety instructor here at Lucky Friday Mine. This, morning, we're going this to go training to is campus. such a waste of time. I wish we'd just get on with it. We need to go over first aid, mine escape ways, personal protective... Those big trucks he's showing us look pretty cool. That's what I want to do, drive one of those. These girls would be really impressed with that. I'd be irresistible. Besides, I don't need to listen to this. I've been driving trucks out on the ranch for years. Why is he wasting our time with this stuff? Now tomorrow we'll be going underground to see how the mine works. And you'll need to go over these hazard sheets so you can recognize dangers. Of course, unless you have <laughs> your own guardian angel. Yeah, right. I've got better things to do than that. We'll meet here tomorrow at 6.30 sharp, and we'll take the 7 o'clock skip underground. Have a good night. You can count on it. I'll be seeing you later. <coughs> what? Man, what a night. Those chicks were really rude. Just wait until I'm a miner on one of those big rigs. That'll get their attention. Maybe I'd better look these things over before tomorrow. Nah. <coughs> Now this here ahead of us is the head frame. It's the main way we get people and materials into the mine. We have to hurry so we can make the seven o'clock man run. Oh man, I can't believe I slept through my alarm. I sure hope I didn't forget anything. Keep your pants on, I'm coming. Well, I think I have everything. Let's see, how does this light work? There's got to be a switch on here somewhere. Whoa, that was bright. I'll just put this on later. Okay, let's try on these safety glasses. Oh man, these are so ugly. I'm not going to need them. Welcome to the rock. Okay, folks, let's move off the skip to the side of the station here. Come on, Ben. Over here and pay attention. This is our shop area where we work on machines and what have you. We're going to go ahead and go out this way. Follow me. Sure, follow you and spend my day looking at shop areas? No thanks. I'm going to go find something more my style. Yeah, now this is what I'm talking about. This stuff is great. Let's see. Lights, steering, brakes, no keys. How do you start one of these things? This is gonna be fun. Forget all that training. Let's start this thing up. Ben, this is a very large and dangerous piece of equipment. Have you been checked out on the hazards of this truck? What are you, my guardian angel? Yeah, you can call me that. You're responsible for your own personal safety. You could get hurt. Worse, you could hurt someone else. Yeah, 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 but it can't be all that tough. I mean, all you gotta do is just start it up. If I could just find the keys. Ben, even an experienced miner wouldn't operate a piece of equipment like this without first doing the safety checks. You need to get down and go over the safety checks with me. I don't see what the big deal is. I mean, it's just a truck. Now then, Ben, let's go over some of the safety checks on the truck. Each vehicle has a checklist you need to go over before you start it up. You need to check the lights, both front and back, tires for proper inflation, the brakes to make sure that they work, the fire extinguisher to see that it hasn't been used or is out of date, the tire chock so you can leave the vehicle safely if you have to stop on a slope, fluid levels for both transmission and engine oil, gauges that will tell you if any of the systems are not working, there's all types of rubber tired equipment in a modern mine. The haul truck you just got off was just one of them. There's also jumbos and tractors and LHDs, which we use for hauling muck. This is one here. Let's come over and take a look at it. Ben, this is an LHD. Stands for Load Haul Dump. And they're commonly used in the, in the mines here. And if you've been operating this loader and the motor is running, when you go to get off, you need to be very 
careful of pinch points because your light cord or anything can catch the controls and actually pinch. Rod, would you show Ben here what I'm talking about? There are a couple other things you need to know about LHDs. You never ride in the bucket. It could tip unexpectedly and dump you out. You'd be run over before the operator could stop. If you are driving one down a ramp, make sure you drive with the bucket ahead of you. That way, if the brakes give out, you can put the bucket down and dig it in to stop the vehicle. If you are operating the LHD, watch out for pedestrians. They usually have the right of way. When they are walking by, you should stop until they are clear. If the machine jerks, it could pin them against the rib. And it goes without saying that you need to operate vehicles at a safe speed. You need to be trained on this. You need to start in the training room, then come underground with an experienced operator like Mitch. What can these guys teach me that I don't already know? Ben, you're not going to last down here very long if you don't listen to the older miners. He's been around a long time because he works safe and knows how to operate the vehicle. Well, they have bars of soap that are going to last longer than you. Operating a truck like this with no training is just not smart. You know something? You worry too much. See ya. This is cool. Oh Lord, what am I gonna do with this guy? Ben, even I can't keep you safe if you're going to do things that's stupid. This is not a farm truck. Without the proper training, you're going to hurt someone. Yeah, I, uh, I think I better go find my group. I wonder where everyone could be. This could be a long walk. Man, I'm getting tired. I didn't know these tunnels could be so long. Hey, there's some transportation. It doesn't look much different than a four-wheeler. I'll just borrow it for a bit. I can't cause any trouble on this thing. Whew. Okay, say my safety glasses, safety first. Oh, someone's coming. I don't want to get caught driving this thing. I'll just hide in here. Hey, wait a minute. I know that guy. He's the one who's given me such a hard time in the pool tournament last night. I'll just give him a little scare. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Hey, what are you, crazy? That's right. What are you trying to do? <laughs> hey, man, what's the matter? I'm just playing around. Can't you take a joke? A joke? A joke about horseplay? No. That's just joking around. Come on, you're fine. Get down. Come on, get down here. I want to tell you a story. People get hurt in the mines due to horseplay. I was hurt 20-some years ago due to horseplay. Let me tell you the story, buddy. I was working in the main haulage. I was a new fresh hand like you. We were working down the drift. I was in the side of the rib standing. Two tractors collided, horse playing. I got caught in a pinch point. I nearly lost my life. Don't you know what horse play is? Horse play is this, buddy, right here. This is horse play. I live with this all my life. You got to learn horse play and work don't mix. It could be your life or the life of somebody else next time. Life and limb can't be replaced, buddy. Ben, you're making my job very difficult. Do you know what you're doing here? What are you doing? I'm just joking around. There's no room for joking around. You could have hurt this man very serious. 
or you could have hurt yourself. Didn't you learn anything? Well, I guess I've learned I've still got a lot to learn, so I better go find my group. Where could my group be? You'd think I'd have run into them by now. Have they already come this way? It's all looking the same to me. Maybe they went down that direction. I think I better stay off the equipment until I get trained. I don't want to be the cause of an accident. What is that? Doesn't he see me here? Come on, man, are you flashing those lights at me? What do you want me to do? Why are you shaking your head at me? What's your problem, newbie? Didn't you get my signal? I didn't understand your signal. I didn't know what you were doing. Didn't you go over that in training? I think we might have, but I don't really think I was paying attention. Listen, pal, this means stop. It doesn't matter where you go. It's a universal signal for all the mines anywhere. This is stop. This means back up, and this means come on ahead. Ben, in most mines, pedestrians have the right of way. But whether they do or not, you have to keep yourself safe. You need to know the signals. It's not easy to communicate underground, but there are a couple of basic systems we use. There are the three lamp signals that Kenny just showed you. And some mines use signal lights to keep vehicles from colliding. You ignored Kenny's stop signal and nearly got run over. Wow, this is a really dangerous place. I didn't realize that. I need to go find my group because that trainer is going to keep me safe. Where could they be? Maybe they went up here. Now I know I heard something up here. I bet this is the way they went. Maybe this will lead me back up to the surface. I've never seen wood like this before. I wonder where everyone went. It looks like this place has a huge ceiling. Well, I don't see anyone here now, but I bet this tunnel leads somewhere. Ugh. What, are you crazy? What, what did I do now? You see that cable? If yeah. that operator starts that slusher, that cable cut you right in half. Man, you'll be singing soprano the rest of your life. Man, that chute's 200 feet down there. If you fall down that chute or get slushed down that chute, even I can't save you. What in the world are you doing in here? You always check in with the guy that's in charge back here coming into a heading. If I'd started up this slusher, I could have thrown you to the back or run you over with that bucket. You would have been hamburger. And then what, what am I going to deal with? I got some guy that's dead and it's not my fault, but you always check in when you come into a work heading. Ben, you've been wandering around the mine for hours. You don't even know where you're at. You're lost. You need to be with your group. Here's a map. I believe your group is right in this area, and you need to stay in the designated areas. OK. Well, at least I know where I'm going now. I never should have left the group. That was stupid. I wish I knew more about this stuff. This track doesn't look too dangerous, but I bet there's all sorts of things I should be watching out for. I wish that guardian angel were here to fill me in. Well, Ben, since you ask. Track haulage can be a very efficient way to move people and things around, but it can also be dangerous. There are a few things you need to remember if you are assigned to work around rail cars or if you're just in the area. Rail crossings are usually marked with signals. Pay attention to them and don't cross if the train is coming. Trains are great for hauling tools or equipment, but don't ever put stuff on the locomotive itself. That's what the cars are for. You can use man trips to help carry your hand tools or other small equipment, 
But if you have a lot of supplies, they need to go on a separate train, not the man trip. Trains will have warning devices on them to let you know they are near. If you hear a warning signal, it means one of three things. The train is getting ready to start up, it's nearing a crossing, another train, or people working in the area, or the operator can't see what's ahead and is warning everyone to watch out. Trains will also have trip lights on the last car if it's pulling or the first car if it's pushing. These let you know what's going on. Also, if you are parking cars for any reason, remember to block the wheels. That protects everyone in the area from runaway cars. These are just some of the safety tips for working around trains. Let's see what some of the experts have to say. Ben, there's someone here I want you to meet. It's Larry. He's been here 25 years. He has a lot of good safety tips for you. How you doing, Ben? Uh, when you're running the motors, you want to take a little slower than usual. Watch out for obstacles. Uh, cars will come off the track on you once in a while. That's why you want to move a little bit slower. Uh, don't get in between the cars. You don't want to ride there. If you're going to ride, in the, ride on the train, it's usually the next to last car. Climb inside of it while we're at a full stop. Never get out of the car or off a motor while it's moving. When you're riding on the motor or in the cars, you want to keep your hands inside, keep your body parts tucked in. Uh, always watch the direction you're going. Look around for obstacles, uh, possible fall of ground. And a few other tips is you don't want to haul anything on the motor. Uh, hand tools you can haul in the cockpit or in the back cockpit. Uh, bigger tools, you want to put them on timber trucks or in the cars. Ben, these are a few things you want to remember to keep you safe underground. If you are working on the locomotive crew, remember that you need to check the whole system for safety at the beginning of each shift. Let's see what Larry can tell us about that. And Ben, we do a pre-shift inspection. We have a slip of paper here that shows you what you want to check. You check uh, your fire extinguishers, which is one up front here and one back here. You go ahead and check it out. Usually you want to flip it like that, make sure everything's movable in it and usable. You come up, check your other fire extinguisher, which is down in the compartment here. And check the gauge, do the same thing with it. Go ahead and put it back. And you come on around here, climb in your cockpit, Check your safety lights, that's the front one, the rear one, they both work. Uh, set your brake, uh, check your controller first, both, both directions. Go ahead, you have a dead man down here, put your foot on the dead man. Go ahead and check your brake by going to the third point. It holds so it's in good shape. And another thing you want to check is your horn, your safety horn. Horn system, it works good. And those are just a few tips I'll give you on the motor. Well, Ben, let's see if Larry's partner has anything to add. Ben, my name is Fred. I understand you're new underground, and this is how we uncouple cars and coupling cars. Okay. Main thing is you keep your hands out of the way, not in here, not down here, out of the way from everything else. You might lose a finger if you don't. Okay. He couples them up by himself, and we have to help him uncouple them. Ben, these are some tips to help keep you safe, and I hope you follow them right down to the T. Ben, the last thing I want to tell you about is pinch points. Ben, you're now coming into a restricted area. If the train comes, there's not enough room for you and the train here, you'll get pinched. So you need to get back in that area where there's a cutout. There's room for you to get, get out of the way there when the train comes by. Okay, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Ben, this is something else I need to show you in the mine. These are air doors. They're operated remotely. There's someone back there that'll pull the cord and they'll open the doors. So you need to be staying clear of air doors when you come up to them. You need to get out of the way because the doors can open and, and pinch you. And also, there could be someone on the other side coming through with a loader. And if you go through air doors, you need to make sure and close them after you go through them. Because if you don't, it could mess up the ventilation. Ben, this mine uses fifth wheel dump cars. And if that wheel happens to run over your foot while you're standing next to the car when it goes by, 
man, you're going to scream and holler, and you're probably going to have a broken foot. So you need to be on the other side of the train when it comes. Okay. Get over on the other opposite side where there isn't a fifth wheel. Also, when you get over on this side, you need to make sure that there's not something, a trip hazard, that you're going to trip on. Make sure and move things out of the way, and make sure you have plenty of clearance. So when the train comes by, you don't accidentally step on something and stumble and fall into the train. Very important. All right. Make sure you've got plenty of room for yourself. Ben, we're coming into the area where we dump the cars. And this is called the Grizzly. And this is called the Camel's Hump. Remember the wheel that I told you about would run over your foot? Yeah. Well, that wheel automatically catches here, and it comes up here, and it automatically dumps the cars. Okay. So when you're in this area, Ben, you need to stay clear because the motor will come through here and the cars are going to be dumping. All right. So we need to get clear. We'll get in behind and get out of the way so the motor crew can dump the cars. There's a lot to remember here, Ben. Think you've got it? There is a lot to remember. I think I've got it, though. And thanks for taking care of me down here. Okay, let's see. According to the map, the Grizzly was on the 3700 level, and my group got off the skip at 4000. So there has to be a way to get back down there. All right, there is a ramp that goes down there. I just have to follow these tracks to 12 shaft. Oh, hey, there's one of those elevators. I bet this leads up to the surface. Let's see. There's no buttons to push, but I think you pull on this thing. Whoa, Ben, you're not trained to use the shaft signals. If you pull on that cord, that signals the hoistman up above. Oh. See, the cage is down below. Someone else has the cage. They could be loading or unloading equipment. You would bell the cage right away from them. You're not trained to use any of this stuff. In the first place, you're supposed to be 10 feet from the shaft. If they're pulling rock or any debris or anything comes down the shaft, you could get hit. So always stay 10 feet from the shaft. Ben, if you need to call a cage, you need to use the squawker to call a cage. And it's over here. Ben, this is the buzzer to call a cage. This is the designated number for calling the cage. Each level has a different number. But not all mines have the same numbers. So each mine has its own set of signals. And you're not trained to, to use the buzzer, Ben. So come on over here, and I'll show you how to get out of the mine. Ben, Ben's, you're not trained on any of the shaft signals. If you need to get a hold of someone on the surface, you can always use a telephone. OK. This is a telephone directory here at the mine. It's just like a telephone book. It gives you the numbers for all the designated areas. So if you need to get a hold of someone on the surface, you'd want to call the hoistman. And the number's right here. You just pick the telephone up, dial the three-digit numbers, and you can get a hold of the hoistman. Very simple. The cage is here, Ben. There's some things I need to explain to you about getting on and off the cage and riding the, and riding the cage. First of all, you always make sure the cage is here before you open the shaft gate. All right. Okay. The next thing you need to do is you need to put on your safety glasses before you get in the cage. There's dust and debris and water in the shaft, so you need to make sure you have your glasses on. Yeah. Okay, get on. You always close the shaft gate when you get on the cage. Make sure the shaft gate's closed. Okay. The cage moves at a pretty good rate of speed, so you need to make sure you have footing in the cage. Make sure you got, you're balanced. Okay. And the next thing you need to do is close the cage door. There's there are two latches on these doors, Ben. There's an upper latch and a lower latch. Okay. Make sure both latches are, are closed and in position and secure. Always keep your hands and body parts inside the cage. Yeah. Never ride like this. Always okay. stay inside the cage. Okay? Then when you get ready to go, then you can reach over and bail the cage to the level you want it to go to. Wow, that's a lot to remember just for riding an elevator. But thanks, that's good information. Sure. Okay, Ben, there's also a sequence for getting off the cage. 
When the cage comes into the station, you always reach out, get a hold of the bell cord, and give the hoistman one bell. That means stop. And okay. he's, he stopped the cage. The cage is now stopped. Then you open your door to the cage and always secure the door. If you don't secure the door, it can flop out on the shaft. Okay. So you make sure and always secure the, secure the door to the cage. Then open the shaft gate and get off. Okay. Then come out. You need to close the shaft gate and give the hoistman a release on the bell cord. Man, you've got a good trainer. If you just pay attention to him, you're going to make a good hand. There's a lot of older hands that work in the mine, and uh, you can get a lot of information from the older people. So uh, as you're working down here, don't be afraid to ask questions. All right. Well, speaking of trainers, have you seen my group? Ben, I believe they're back this way. OK, thanks. Hey. What's that noise? Yikes! Whoa! Oh man, I'm... I'm... I'm okay. Oh man, it was just a dream. I'm okay. What time is it anyway? Oh, I gotta go underground in less than two hours. I'm not ready for this. I need to look over those hazard sheets again. What do I need to know? Okay, here we go. Don't operate anything you aren't trained on. Do a safety check before you start any piece of equipment. Make sure the brakes and lights and all the other stuff works before you start. Don't fool around underground. Horseplay can really hurt people. Pay attention to signals and signs, especially around moving equipment. If pedestrians don't have the right of way, get out of the way. If they do, make sure the operator knows you're there. Always let other people know if you're in their work area. Don't wander around in the mine by yourself especially if you don't know where you're going. Trains can be dangerous. Pay attention to crossing signs, lights, and warning horns. Don't ride between cars or use the locomotive to carry your tools. Follow all the established safety rules when operating trains, like doing pre-shift inspection and blocking parked cars. Be careful when coupling and uncoupling cars. Stay out of the places where you could get pinched between the cars. LHDs operate much differently than most surface vehicles, so they have some specific safety points to keep in mind. Never ride in the bucket of an LHD. If it tips, you could be run over before the operator even knows what happened. When operating an LHD, drive with the bucket facing down the slope so you can dig it in and stop if the brakes fail. Always make sure the vehicle is stopped and turned off before getting off the vehicle. This will keep you from accidentally pinching yourself in the machine if you get caught on the controls. Whenever you operate an LHD, or any other vehicle, watch out for pedestrians and always stay at a complete stop until they are clear of the vehicle. When working in or around the shaft, you should never try calling for a skip unless you've been properly trained. Make sure you stay 10 feet back from the shaft until the skip arrives. When riding in the skip, always wear your safety glasses. And just as with the trains, you should always keep your body parts tucked in when riding on the skip. Not even a guardian angel can keep you safe if you don't follow the rules and pay attention to your own safety. Wow, that's a lot to remember. But that trip underground today is going to be great, and I'm going to be the safest guy down there. Man, I see you're here early this morning. Yeah, I really wasn't paying attention in class yesterday, so I decided to come in early and go over these hazard sheets one more time. That's great. I'm glad to see that you're studying up and paying attention. That's great. Well, I just really wanted to thank you for all your help. I really appreciate it. Yeah, good. I can see my work here is done.